Hi, Math Day students. I hope you're having a good Wednesday. Miss Strickler here, obviously, from our home, which is where we all live all the time now. <laughs> That's okay. I have a lovely home. I'm very grateful for it. But it will be a wonderful thing when we can go out, right? Um, I just hope you're having a great day, and I hope that this lesson helps you. So let's say a prayer. Father in heaven, I just thank you for this day. I pray for all of my students that they would focus and learn everything really well from the video. They'd have great success on their uh, test and that um, you'd strengthen me and help me right now to be the very best teacher I can be. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, let's get started. I'm going to sit down. Hey, Nicole, would you answer the phone for me, please? And uh, we're going to keep going. That was kind of an untimely call. Um, Hello. Okay. okay, so does everybody have their paper ready, I hope? And we're going to do lesson 13.3. All right, so <clears throat> what we're going to do in this section is multiply polynomials, okay? So here's what we're going to do for the first one. And there's some rules we have to remember. Now, we've been doing this before, but um, it's going to get more complex. So here I have multiplying x cubed times negative 3x. So there's two steps. One, you're going to multiply the coefficients. and then you're going to add the exponents. Okay, we did an exponents chapter, and this problem really is a reminder of that, but it'll get harder as we go along. It's all about polynomials. All right, so here I've got two, so I'm gonna have two times negative three. So those are my coefficient, coefficients, and I get negative six, all right? And then with the variable, I have negative 3x times x. And as you know, you add exponents when you're multiplying. So that is x to the fourth. And then I put it together. That would be step three. And I get negative 6x to the fourth. And that's my answer. Okay, that's multiplying two terms. Now, we're going to use the distributive property to do the next one. Okay, 2n times 4n squared minus 5. Okay, so I want to multiply 2n times both terms in the parentheses. So I'm going to rewrite that, showing that 2n times 4n squared. And then I'm going to have a minus, because I have a minus there. And then I'm going to have 2n times the 5. So I've got two terms. So now I'm going to do what I did in number 1 to each one of these, OK? Because now I'm adding more and more terms to my problem. So 2 times 4 is 8 and 1n plus 2n is n cubed. And then I have a minus, don't forget to put that. And then here I've got 2 times 5 is 10, and then I just have 1n, so I bring that along. So here is my answer, 8n cubed minus 10n. Okay, I'm going to give you a few to do on your own already. So you can work on these. 4a times a squared, number 2, negative 2m times 7m squared, number 3, p times 2p plus 3, and then number 4, uh, negative t squared times negative 2t plus 8. Okay, so those are your OIOs. Go ahead and pause the video and try those, and I will just keep going and we'll go over them together. In the meantime, I will change colors. Let's use orange. Okay, 
So let's go back to this. So I only have one number, so it's just going to be 4. And then I add my exponents, so I get 4a to the third power. And on number 2, I've got negative 2 times 7. And then m times m squared is m cubed. Okay, now over here, I'm going to multiply p times both of these terms. So I have p times 2p plus p times 3. And let's see what we get. Here in this one, I get 2p squared plus 3p. And that's my answer. This is a good step to show to show your work. All right, now down here, this is a little harder, but that's okay if we take it slow, and step by step, we'll be just fine. So I'm going to multiply negative t squared times negative 2t, and then I'm going to add negative t squared times 8, okay? So here, in this first term, I have a negative times a negative, which is positive, and then I have 2t to the third, okay? And now here, I just have a number times a uh, letter, and those just go next to each other, but it will be a minus. Be careful, because it's a negative term there. So that's my answer. All right, let's keep going. Number four, or is that number three? Oh, number three, okay. Number three. We're going to have 5z to the third power, okay? So how do I distribute that power of 3? What I do is I <clears throat> cube each part of it. So I would have 5 cubed times z cubed, okay? And then I see if there's anything else that I can simplify, and I can. 5 cubed means... 5 times 5 times 5, okay? So if I work that out, I get 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. So I end up with 125 z cubed. And that's that final answer. Let's do another one of those. How about this? 10 b h to the fifth. And we'll do that. So everything in the parentheses has to be raised to the fifth power. So that means I'm going to have 10 to the fifth, b to the fifth, and h to the fifth. <clears throat> okay, so then I've got 10 to the fifth means I have five zeros, and then b to the fifth and h to the fifth. So that's that answer. Okay, now there's a rule I want to show you, and it looks like this. A to the M, I know it's a big funky A, but that's what they use, raised to the N power. So if we have a power inside the parentheses attached to a letter, and then we have another parentheses outside, what do we do? When we've just been multiplying, we've added those exponents. Well, this time, we multiply them. So I end up with m times n. That's the formula. You'll see how that works out in just a few minutes. Okay, so let's do one here. How about this? Uh, 3 squared raised to the third power. Okay? So what that means is I'm going to do 3 to the second times the 3. So when, it's, uh, when it looks like this with the parentheses there, I multiply the exponents. So I get 3 to the sixth power. And what does that mean? It does not mean 3 times 6. No. It means 3 multiplied by itself 6 times. All right? Now, if you don't have a calculator, which you shouldn't, let's talk about how to make that a little easier. Well, let's see. If I get multiply 3 times 3, I get 9. 
And if I multiply these two threes together, I get 9. And then these two threes together, I get 9. So now, 9 times 9 is 81 times 9. So all those threes multiply together come down to 8 times 9, 81 times 9. And that is 729. So that would be my answer to that one. All right, let's do another one of those. How about if I had a power like this? Y to the fifth times uh, raised to the third. Okay. Again, the y doesn't change, but I just multiply 3 times 5. Okay. Now let's do a little harder one. How about this? 2y squared raised to the third power. So everything inside has to be raised to the third power. So that means that I'm going to have 2 to the third power. And remember, 2 is next to y there, so that means multiply. So I'm going to have a multiplication here. And then I have the second part, which is y squared times the 3, because I have this raised to the power situation. So then 2 cubed, that means 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So I have 8y to the 6th, and that's that answer. All right, now I think we did a lot of this initial work in chapter four, but it's going to, we're going to take it to the next level here. So <clears throat> here's another one, 3a to the 10th times a to the 4th times b squared c raised to the 4th, okay? Go ahead and write that down. Now remember PEMDAS, all the way back in chapter 1, what do we do? Well, we do parentheses first. There's nothing I can do in there. What's next? Exponents. So I need to deal with the exponent that's on the outside here. That is my next step. And you see there's more than one thing happening here because with this negative 3a to the 10th next to the parentheses, that is multiplication. So I've got two operations that I'm going to do. I have to deal with the exponent and I have to deal with multiplication. So I want to do the exponent first. All right, so I'm just going to carry along my 3a to the 10th. Now, I'm going to raise it to the 4th. So every one of these exponents has to be multiplied by 4. So a to the 4th times 4 becomes a to the 16th. Then b squared raised to the 4th is 2 times 4, which is 8. Now C here has no number there, so that means that I just have 1. So I'm going to have 1 times 4, so I end up with C to the 4th. Okay, so remember, when I'm raising to the power, according to this rule up here, I multiply exponents. But now, I'm multiplying terms. I'm not raising to the power. It's a different thing, and we did it earlier. When we're just multiplying terms, we add exponents, right? So let's write that down just to be clear. Raising to the power which is right there. You multiply exponents and when we're multiplying terms We add exponents. This is just something you have to memorize, and by having some practice, you will do that. Okay, so let's look here. I have one number here on the outside, and I have no numbers inside. So I don't have anything to multiply the negative 3 by, so I'm just going to carry it down here. All right, now I have a to the 10th. Do I have an a term inside the parentheses? Yes, I do. I have a to the 16th. 
So I'm going to add those and I get a to the 26th. Okay, now I just bring along the other two because they're different variables. They're not the same. So the only place that I'm actually adding is right there with the a. So that's what your answer is, right there. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is some OIOs. And I want you to multiply. Those are our directions. And we have number one, 2 to the 4th raised to the 2 power. Number 2, x to the 6th raised to the 2 power. Number 3, uh, 4a squared b raised to the 2 power. And let's do one more. How about this? Um, 5 a squared times a to the third c d squared raised to the third power. So go ahead and try that one. That's a little bit trickier. Okay, you can pause the video while I change colors and we'll come back in just a minute. All right, so here I'm going to raise the power. So I've got 2, and then I've got 4 times 2 is 8. And 2 to the 8th is a lot. Uh, I believe is 256, so we'll see. Um, that means 2 times 2, to, I've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I get this is 4 times 2 is 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. There it is. Okay. Now, with the variable, I just multiply. So I've got x to the 12th. And then number 3, I'm going to square this. So I've got 4 to the 1st times 2. And then I have 8 squared raised to the 2 becomes 4, and b with the 1 there I don't see, that becomes b squared. Now let's work out the 4 squared. I get 16, and then a to the 4th, b squared. Alright, okay, now here I've got two functions like I had in that uh, one problem number 7. I've got the power right there, and I also have multiplication right here, and I do the exponent first. So let's just carry this down here like this and then work inside. So I'm going to multiply each one of these letters or variables by 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. C is to the first power. I don't see the 1. That becomes C to the third. And then D is, hey guys, uh, 2 times 3 is 6. Okay? So I've done the uh, exponent part, now I'm going to multiply. And in this time, when I'm multiplying, I add the exponents that are the same terms. So I'm just going to have 5. And then here I'm going to multiply or add those two. So I get a to the 11th, and then c to the 3rd, d to the 6th. Now there's a lot of exponents. So do yourself a favor and go slow. All right? You want to make sure you do it right. We have one more, which is a word problem. And let's see what that is. Number eight. The radius of a container is twice its height. Write an expression to show this. Okay. So I have a um, a cylinder like this, and it says the radius is twice the height. So the height is h, and that means that the radius is going to be 2h. Whatever the h is, if it's 5, then the, the radius would be 10. 
If the height was 10, the radius would be 20. You see that it, it doubles. Okay, well our volume formula for the area of a, or for the, uh, the volume formula for a uh, cylinder is pi r squared h. So, I'm going to take out the r and put in 2h, right, because r is 2h according to my <coughs> sentence there. Okay, so let's work that out, and this is using the principles that we just talked about. So I've got the volume is V, and then I have, I'm going to do 2 squared, which is 4, and then H times, to raise to the second power is 2. So I did that, I do my exponent first, and now I'm multiplying, and I have an H here, and I have an H here, so I can multiply those, and what I do then is I add those exponents. So I'm going to put 4 pi, 4 on the outside because I always want to have my coefficient first. And then I have h squared times h and I add those exponents and I end up getting h to the third. And that's it. I just want to write the expression. That's all. So the point is for you to see how what you do when we put 2h in and how we work that out using the principles that we've talked about. Okay, well that's it for today, and I will send the homework home, and I hope you have a great Wednesday. Bye now.